work with Monty, uh, know the kind of person he is, and the quick turnaround that has taken place in Phoenix is remarkable. So I think Monty has to be under consideration. Uh, I think Quinn Snyder in our division, the job that he's done with the Utah Jazz, uh, who have been the number one seed most of the year, obviously that's changed a little recently with the injuries to Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley. Um, you know, but it's always not the, the coach, in my opinion, you know, people always assume it's always got to be the coach with the best record. And, and I don't buy into that. You know, I think a guy like James Borrego in Charlotte has done a phenomenal job. Uh, I think the job that Tom Thibodeau has done in New York has been incredible. Uh, Scott Brooks in Washington, uh, their turnaround within this season. So uh, a lot of guys definitely under consideration. Uh, and, you know, whoever gets it will be more than deserving. On a side note, I think it's kind of crazy that Jerry Sloan never won the award. Uh, which, which to me is just hard to even fathom uh, because Jerry Sloan is one of the greatest to ever do it. Uh, so sometimes coaches get it and sometimes they don't. Next we'll go to Ryan Blackburn. Coach, on Tom Thibodeau and the Knicks, uh, what, what really stands out about the coaching job that he has done just sort of helping elevate Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, guys like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously when I first got into the NBA, you know, Jeff Van Gundy hired me uh, and I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to be on a staff with the likes of Tom Thibodeau, Steve Clifford, Don Chaney, uh, and learned so much from all those guys. And they, and they went out of their way to look after me and help me grow as a coach. Uh, and just to see the success that the Knicks are having, it's no surprise if you follow Tom's career, uh, they're a terrific defensive team. Uh, I think they are, uh, during the season, I think the fourth best defense in the NBA. Um, the way he uses Julius Randle um, in so many different ways, posting up, isolations, pick and rolls, whatever it might be, uh, and they're winning. I mean, this is the first time I think the Knicks will finish with a winning record since 2012-13. And, uh, and I think Tibbs' identity is all over that team. So, um, that's why he should definitely be under consideration for Coach of the Year. Next, we'll go to Katie Wingy. Hey, Coach, 20 games now with Aaron Gordon, and I guess this is kind of a two-part question, but one, are you surprised at all by how easy and seamless his transition has been? And two, over that span, 16 and four, how has his addition helped so much in the winning? Yeah, you know, um, that first, like, uh, maybe five to seven games, Katie, uh, I was really surprised. I mean, that was like the honeymoon period. Everything was going so well, and he just fit in like he'd been here for years, playing alongside Jamal, Nicola, and everybody else. Uh, and we have to somehow find a way to help him get back to that. Uh, and he and I are always communicating and talking about how we can do that. Uh, and what I love about Aaron Gordon is this. Um, I keep telling him, you know, yesterday he sends me a really nice message and was really happy that I went coach of the month. Um, and in that conversation, we talk about how I have to help him kind of get back to playing at the level I know he's capable of. And what I loved about his response was he said, hey, coach, that's not just on you. It's also on me. I have to play better. And that is so refreshing because a lot of times players look to blame others instead of looking inward. And Aaron's not afraid to do that. Uh, so, yes, a little surprised at how easy it was, but it also speaks to who he is as a person. Uh, he does not have an ego. He didn't come in here saying me, me, me. He was all about how can we be the best and how can I help this group win games? Um, and the reason I think we're 16 and four in the last 20 since he got here, uh, we're a top, I think, probably eight, seven or eight defense in that time, a top four offense. His versatility on that defensive end of the floor like the other game against the Lakers, you know, I thought he guarded Anthony Davis really well. We doubled AD in the second half a little bit just to get the ball out of his hands, but he had some great possessions guarding him like he had against Kawhi. Um, so you, you're adding a guy that really thrives on both ends of the floor, and it's shown. We'll go to Harrison Wind. Hey, Michael, with this latest injury to PJ, I mean, how much more creative do you have to get with your lineups? Like, do you think about moving someone like Michael up a position to the two with just not having a ton of guards? Does 
Marcus Howard get an opportunity? Just how much more creative do you have to get now? Well, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you're continuing to get creative. You know, it seems like uh, our backcourt has just been decimated by injuries. Jamal first, obviously, then Monte, then Will, and now PJ, uh, which is so unfortunate. You know, uh, I had a long talk with PJ yesterday, and um, he was playing so well for us. We were playing well, and he was proving that he could be a starter on a really good team. So you hate to see anybody go down. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we only have so many bodies. And you mentioned guys that – there's a group of guys in our roster, Harrison, that haven't played a lot. Marcus Howard, uh, Bo Bo, Vladko Chanchar, Zeke Naji. You know, do you go to one of those guys? Uh, do you play really big? Do you play really small? And the reality is with seven games to go, you know, I think we have an opportunity to try different things. Uh, yes, we want to try to win every game, but we also want to be smart about how we approach these games – and not overload anybody else to try to avoid any further injuries. So, um, yeah, you'll see you'll see some creativity. All right, we have time for one more. We'll end with Mike Singer. Hey, Michael, do you have an update on PJ and and any kind of time frame for him? A and B. I, I don't know if you if if you're comfortable getting into this, but what to what degree do you think the compressed schedule? has affected you guys and affected guys' statuses and, and led to some of these injuries? Yeah, I mean, as far as PJ's status, uh, he is out. You know, uh, I don't know what the exact timeline is, Mike, but uh, I do not anticipate PJ Dozier being back anytime soon. Um, you know, it was a pretty significant injury, uh, and that's all I'll say on it at this point. Um, your second part of the question, uh, I definitely think there's something there. You know, I mean, this is uh, the condensed schedule. I know when it, the second half came out and I looked at it, you know, I was really worried about how we were going to get through this both mentally and physically. And, you know, I can't believe that Denver is the uh, soft tissue injury capital of the world. <laughs> it seems like that lately. But when you're playing as many games as we are, and trust me, as a coaching staff, we've done everything we can in terms of not practicing, canceling shoot arounds, trying to give our players as much recovery time as possible and keeping them off their feet. But when you have games three and four, it's like we're about to go into another three and four. We play tonight, we play at Utah, then we come home to play Brooklyn. That is a lot. And it's not just our team. I think you see it all across the NBA throughout the 30 teams in this association. So uh, I think the NBA kind of boxed themselves in a little bit with a hard begin date and a hard end date with keeping the Olympics in mind. And I think injuries have really ramped up somewhat because of that, but you know, it is what it is. These are very, uh, these are not your normal times. We're still in the middle of a pandemic that just will not go away. And I think everyone's trying to do the best they can, but I think just in general, Mike, I do think more injuries have definitely crept in because of the condensed schedule. All right, that'll do it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.